First off, would like to send our thoughts and prayers to uh, Majority Whip Solis, uh, his, uh, you know, the, the people that were involved uh, in the incident, and uh, just uh, our full support uh, from the people of Puerto Rico uh, after this this uh, tragic uh, event. Um, secondly, uh, we are here uh, to talk about the results of the plebiscite that occurred in Puerto Rico. In essence. We had uh, an expression, a clear expression of the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, the people spoke. And now what we are uh, doing here is we are asking for action, action from Congress so that we can resolve the 500-year-old uh, dilemma of uh, territory in, in Puerto Rico so that we can uh, make uh, right with the civil rights and democratic rights that haven't been uh, attained to in, in Puerto Rico. And uh, our expectation is that this uh, issue moves uh, quickly uh, with the importance it merits. Let me just put it in, in context, in proper context, uh, what this means and why it's in the best interest of uh, the United States and, and the world to act on this, on this issue. Um, Territories have all but, but disappeared in the world. It, it was a uh, 19th uh, century construct. Uh, it started being eradicated throughout the 20th century. And uh, uh, now, you know, Puerto Rico remains the most populous and largest and oldest uh, uh, territory in the world. Uh, we, we have always uh, pointed to this as a civil rights issue. Uh, the U.S. citizens that reside in Puerto Rico don't have the same rights that the U.S. citizens that live uh, anywhere else uh, within the states. It is not a, a Puerto Rican uh, problem. It is a geographical problem. If a Puerto Rican moves uh, mm -hmm. to, say, Florida, he or she acquires all of the rights uh, that an American citizen has in the states. And uh, by the same token, if uh, any... Uh, U.S. citizen that was born in the in the states moves to Puerto Rico, uh, they would lose those rights. So we've been uh, pointing out this uh, this sort of flaw in the system for the past uh, decades, uh, and we've been calling out the fact that it's uh, a lack or a problem in terms of uh, civil rights. Now we have always uh, gone into Congress, and uh, I must uh, recognize the efforts done by. Uh, uh, Congressman Young on this effort so that we can get a solution uh, from Congress. Uh, in the past, one of the main sort of obstacles uh, to finding a solution in Congress was that the people of Puerto Rico had not decided. Uh, we hadn't gone through a process where uh, there, was a, a cl there was clarity on, on the results. Uh, we hadn't gone through the democratic uh, mechanism uh, to define what the people of Puerto Rico wanted. Uh, in 2012, November of 2012, that, uh, that argument ended. Uh, the people of Puerto Rico had a plebiscite where uh, they rejected the uh, current colonial territorial status and favored uh, statehood significantly. Now, not a lot was done uh, after that process, uh, mainly because uh, the administration that was elected in that same election favored the current uh, status. Uh, notwithstanding that, uh, before we got to office, we told the people of Puerto Rico we wanted to embark on another process uh, so that we can ratify those results. And that process was uh, uh, executed uh, last, uh, the 11th of, of June. Uh, the results, again, uh, conclusive. Uh, people favored statehood. Uh, people uh, rejected the current status. And now uh, we have two process, uh, uh, processes, uh, democratically uh, constructed processes, where uh, the U.S. citizens of Puerto Rico have uh, taken a stand and have uh, pleaded a choice. And we are here uh, so that this, uh, the voice of the people of Puerto Rico gets recognized, number one. And number two, so that we can get some action uh, we can get action on this matter going uh, in Congress. It is a matter of civil rights. It is a matter of democratic rights. And our view is that, you know, we, uh, the vast majority of, of people in Puerto Rico, U.S. citizens in Puerto Rico, love and cherish 
our US, US citizenship. Uh, we value it because we value the, uh, you know, the core beliefs of democracy, liberty, uh, justice. Um, and we uh, want this period of uh, territorial uh, politics to end because it, it sort of hinders that, that effort. More so now that the people of Puerto Rico have expressed uh, their preference and they want this territorial uh, status to end and they want to become, and we want to become uh, uh, the 51st uh, state of the nation. So uh, it is our view that uh, action needs to be taken now that for uh, the U.S. to have a consistent message across the world uh, going to Cuba, going to Venezuela, going to uh, Syria, and pleading for democracy. Uh, it needs to take action in its own uh, homeland and attend to the 3.5 million citizens uh, that reside in the island that have already expressed democratically what their will and what their preference is. So this is our, our, our petition, and we would like to uh, thank uh, you know, all of the support that we've been receiving uh, Across, uh, across party lines, across uh, uh, countries in terms of, uh, you know, the effort, uh, the, uh, the desire to have a solution to this problem in Puerto Rico. I, I would like to, to recognize, uh, of course, uh, uh, Congressman uh, Don Young, who has been uh, a stalwart in, in this effort. Uh, he has always believed in the self-determination of the people of Puerto Rico. And we thank him for uh, his efforts in the past and his efforts uh, now. And uh, in the same, by the same token, we would like to recognize and thank uh, Congressman Darren Soto uh, for, for his commitment to self-determination and to a, a transparent uh, democratic process uh, in Puerto Rico. Both of them uh, uh, were part of an effort that uh, our Secretary of State, um, Luis Gerardo Rivera Marin, uh, uh, guided uh, so that we can have some clarity, uh, that we can show uh, international and national observers that this was a, a organized, uh, fair process. Uh, and I will let them uh, speak a little bit uh, about that. But uh, from, you know, from my vintage uh, point and from the people of Puerto Rico, I would like to thank again uh, both congressmen. And I would like uh, uh, Congressman Young to uh, have the opportunity to, to make some remarks. Thank you, Governor and um, Secretary of State. Uh, I was pleased to be an observer of this election. It was the best election held that I've ever witnessed. Uh, very fail-safe, uh, fair, and well-operated. Made me feel good. I've been involved in this issue since 1996. I had the first vote on the floor of the House, passed by one vote. But it is time we stop colonizing Puerto Rico. It's time that we recognize 350, 3,500,000 Puerto Rican citizens of America. It's time that the Congress steps up and does their job to take and make the mistake as they have spoken. Overwhelmingly, 97%. And what we'll do now, with the help of my good friend, my senator friend, I mean congressman friend, we will, in fact, uh, pass a bill or uh, we will recognize this plebiscite and make it the 51st state. And we are the only ones that have the constitutional authority to do that, the Congress. Now, my interest really in this area started way back when we were the 49th state. And I heard the same arguments then. Why should we? They're a long ways away. And they forgot we are American citizens as Puerto Ricans right now as Port American citizens. I was um, very frankly went back to the history of the state of Alaska and Ernest Gruning on the floor of the Senate, our senator at that time, stood up and very frankly in a very loud voice and gesture said it's time America stops colonizing. I'd say it's time for Congress to act to make Puerto Rico as a people sought to do so a state, the 51st state of this union. Thank you Mr. Governor. Thank you, Congressman. Thanks again for all, all the efforts and, and for your words. We would also uh, like uh, uh, to recognize and to hear the remarks of uh, our Congressman uh, from Florida, uh, Darren Soto. Thank you, Governor. My position from the beginning 
is still my position, which is that the people of Puerto Rico need to determine their form of government. Uh, what else could someone of Puerto Rican descent raised in New Jersey and Florida believe? Anything else would have been more colonialism, telling the people of the island what they need to be. But I also believe in the rule of law as an attorney and also know that many in Florida and throughout the nation uh, want to see an ultimate determination. And so that's why I was proud to join both the Natural Resource Committee and the subcommittee on Indian, Insular, and Alaskan Affairs, along with uh, our long-serving Congressman Don Young, uh, to be there in a position uh, to have jurisdiction over Puerto Rico and view uh, if a plebiscite were called uh, to make sure it was in compliance with law. We had the pleasure of both going down on a bipartisan uh, trip on behalf of the subcommittee to review the election. We found it to be in compliance with law. We found it to be accessible uh, to all uh, Puerto Ricans on the island. And we found it to be uh, also duly noticed. That's all we have in the United States is elections and the rule of law. Anything else, we just get down a road where you could call into question any election from the President of the United States to members of Congress to governors and the like. And so we compiled a comprehensive report uh, that all of you will be receiving over the next few minutes, the Young Soto 2017 Comprehensive Report on the, on the Puerto Rico plebiscite that will contain our findings uh, that are prepared for the subcommittee and for Congress. And so now there's only really a, a few things that remain. Uh, a civil rights movement for equality for the people of Puerto Rico now that they've made their, determiners, de their determination. We have a people who serve in the United States military in overwhelming margins, a people who pay their federal taxes, who pledge allegiance to our flag but can't vote for the President of the United States, don't have voting members of Congress or the Senate. And now it's up to Congress to make their final determination. Uh, and certainly, now that the people of Puerto Rico are decided, uh, we'll certainly be supporting uh, their entry into the Union as the 51st state. And uh, going forward, it may be a short road or a long road, but we're committed to making sure the will of the people uh, is exhibited and supported. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Congressman Soto. Thank you for, for your words, and thank you for your commitment to the people of Puerto Rico. I would also like to take the opportunity to have, uh, you know, uh, the lead uh, effort you know, that, that was established uh, for the international and national observers. Uh, you know, we would like to thank uh, and recognize and hear his remarks. Uh, Mr. Jason Emmert, if, if you please could. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. I was the executive director of the Election Observation Mission. My name is Jason Emmert. I am also an attorney. Uh, and at the request of, of the Department of State and Secretary of State, I formed a joint bipartisan domestic and international observation delegation to audit their voting procedure to ensure Puerto Rico had a free and fair election represented by the Puerto Rican people in compliance with law. Our 15-person delegation consists of the following individuals. Our, our chairman, Congressman Young and Congressman Soto, thank you so much for your leadership on this, along with Rhode Island Secretary of State Nelly Gorbea, former Michigan Congressman Thaddeus McCotter, former chairwoman of the Federal Election Committee, Ann Ravel, former, chairwoman, uh, former chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Don Fowler, Central American Parliament Deputy Fernando Batista, Dominican Republic Congressman Elias Sarei, Texas State Representative Jason Isaac, Mississippi State Representative Chris Johnson, U.S. Virgin Island Republican Party Chairman John Canagata, former chairman of the Rhode Island Republican Party, Giovanni Chichon, former chairwoman of the South Carolina Democratic Party, Carol Fowler, and Laura Bialba, who's with us today from the FEC. Our team, in its finding, uh, found the voting process was overwhelmingly free, fair, effectively organized, and in compliance with law. Election officials were all well-trained and professional. Security was provided at almost every polling location, ensuring that voting was done peacefully. There were no observable signs of political influence or polling malpractice by officials. And while there were some relatively minor issues, a vast majority of the voters were able to efficiently cast their ballot without any serious impediment or disenfranchisement. In those instances where there were minor problems, 
They were resolved quickly, and the procedures and the fail-safe mechanisms, as Congressman Young has mentioned, uh, worked exactly how they were designed by the Election Commission. Over the course of our mission in Puerto Rico, we met with top officials from the Puerto Rico State Elections Commission, including its president, Lisa Garcia, its chief information officer, Maria Santiago, and individuals representing each of the three political statuses that were on the ballot. The day before the election, we learned about the island's electoral system and the specifics of the particular plebiscite. This seminar covered topics including the legal and constitutional framework of federal laws regarding Puerto Rico's political status, past plebiscites and their results, the nonpartisan voter education campaign in this plebiscite run by the Election Commission, voter registration, absentee voting, and mail voting procedures, and the electoral law and regulations for the implementation of this past plebiscite. Additionally, we were educated on the digital vote counting technology that is used in Puerto Rico and learned the significant measures taken by the, the Election Commission to ensure the safety and security of the election results data. Prior to Election Day, the mission also had the opportunity to witness early voting in two distinct <laughs> institutional contexts. First, visiting correctional facility and watching the inmates vote, as well as uh, the vote to ensure that hospital patients had the right to vote and exercise their constitutional rights, even though they couldn't get out on Sunday. On Election Day, we divided into groups and covered Puerto Rico's eight senatorial districts. We visited over 50 polling stations throughout Puerto Rico and took detailed notes on the live voting process in action. Observers also had the opportunity to visit a permanent voter registration office location, which provided voters the opportunity to replace any electoral ID cards the day of the event up to 30 minutes prior to the close of the polls. Furthermore, the Puerto Rico Election Commission appeared to have the resources and independence to conduct a successful event, and the delegation congratulates the U.S. citizens of Puerto Rico for exercising their constitutional right to vote and expressing their choice in the future of Puerto Rico's status. We are appreciative of the thoroughness of the Election Commission and the professionalism of everyone associated with their organization. We want to specifically commend President Garcia and her team on their conduct and professionalism. Alternatively, the delegation is disappointed in those who did call for a boycott. Our delegation found that this is not in, in accordance with domestic standards of election participation or our democratic norms. Nevertheless, our delegation finds no significance in the so-called boycott and cannot discern anything from any individual who did not participate in the election. Barring circumstances of disenfranchisement, in a democracy we cannot de deduce an outcome to those who do not participate. For example, are we to invalidate a Texas constitutional amendment recognizing the right of people to hunt, fish, and harvest wildlife because only 11 percent of voters participated in that election, despite it passing with 81 percent of the vote? Or should we have deprived the primary voters of Nebraska and Washington of their presidential nominees from the 2016 election, who only had 13 percent and 10 percent voter turnout, respectively? We do commend Puerto Rico on the following improvements in their voting over the last few years. In our debriefing, once the vote had concluded, our delegation was impressed by the uniformity and consistency of the process around the island. Each one of us had the same story and came back and concluded the same result. Without question, the implementation of the electronic vote counting technology has significantly improved the electoral process in Puerto Rico. Ensuring the participation of voters in jail and hospitals is also an incredibly positive and, and the philosophical intent to keep people involved in the process is highly commendable. The use of voter ID cards in Puerto Rico has been implemented for years and has had a, had a positive effect on the electoral process without infringing on anyone's right to vote. The access of, of handicap accessibility and the helpfulness of the trained poll workers is one of the most impressive takeaways from the observation. Poll workers were professional and courteous to all voters and their thorough training professional was on full display throughout Sunday. In cases where the delegation observers identified problems on election day, most were quickly resolved by polling officials or the Election Commission. The most significant change we would like to see is keeping the polls open later to further ensure all eligible voters sufficient time and opportunity to exercise their right to vote. Currently, polls close at 3 p.m., and we encourage the government co to consider extending voting hours for future elections to come more in line closely with domestic standards. Additionally, only time will tell if the approximate 638,000 people recently added to the voter rolls by a court judgment participated in the June 2017 plebiscite. If most of these voters who had not participated in the two prior general elections did not participate in the plebiscite, it creates a false impression of low voter turnout. 
For example, the, removing the previously purged voters would add almost 10 percent to voter participation numbers. So we ask the government also reconcile, re reconcile the voter rolls. To conclude, the plebiscite was conducted in a free and fair manner without fraud or untoward election tampering. Now that the vote has concluded, our delegation is confident in the reliability of the election results. To that end, our delegation was not there to support a particular choice, as we represented many differing political opinions and only came to validate the outcome and the process. Thus, the result should stand as it is without any question to the integrity of the process and the self-determination of the people of Puerto Rico. Our team determined that Puerto Rico meets and in most instances exceeds the norms of domestic and international election procedure. From a delegation perspective, we found there were no infringement or impediments to anyone's right to vote or reason to invalidate the plebiscite over process. Henceforth, we have concluded our role in the, pro in the, in the plebiscite and will work with Congressman Young and Soto to provide any addendum to their report as they see fit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Emmert. And uh, once again, thank you all. We would like to uh, just add a few points. We've had uh, several uh, meetings uh, uh, since arriving here to Washington, and we'll continue to do so as well. Uh, we would like to thank all of those that, that are receiving these results and just uh, for the benefit of, you know, uh, the people that, that are here or watching us home, here are the, uh, the results, of the uh, preliminary results that have been certified by the State Elections Commissions, uh, where it shows that 97.18% uh, of uh, those voters chose uh, statehood, whereas uh, only 1.5% of the voters chose the current territorial status and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the free association and independence uh, alternative, and 1.3 percent of those uh, voters chose the actual uh, territorial uh, status. So uh, as you can see, uh, the voice of the people was loud and clear. Uh, we expect uh, that uh, Congress will react. Uh, we will be here making sure that the environment gets uh, generated. And our expectation is, is action. We would like to thank, uh, once again, uh, Congressman Young, Congressman Soto, uh, Mr. Emmert, and Secretary uh, of State for uh, their part in, in this effort. And we would like to invite uh, all of those that support civil rights, all of those that support uh, democratic rights, all of those that love uh, the context of the United States as a standard bearer for democracy in the world to help us end this last chapter uh, of colonialism uh, to help us allow the United States in good standing uh, be able to speak about democracy in other jurisdictions without having uh, the uh, limitation of doing so based on still uh, having uh, disenfranchised 3.5 million U.S. citizens uh, that can't vote in Puerto Rico, that can't vote for their commander-in-chief, and that want to be uh, fully integral part of the United States. And with those uh, statements, we'll be happy to take any questions from, from the press. Gobernador, si puedo hacer una breve expresión en español. Claro que sí. Eh, muchas gracias a, a todos los compañeros y compañeras. Eh, hoy estamos aquí porque el pueblo de Puerto Rico ha hablado claro y de manera contundente y nuestra expectativa es que se tome acción que se tome acción en el Congreso, que los distintos cuerpos, eh, los distintos foros de derechos civiles, de derechos humanos, de derechos democráticos, sean parte de este reclamo y que le permitan al pueblo de Puerto Rico culminar lo que son 500 años de coloniaje, eh, que nos permitan a los Estados Unidos culminar eh, con el historial de mantener un territorio colonial que sostiene 3.5 millones de ciudadanos americanos eh, que residen en Puerto Rico, pero que no tienen los mismos derechos. En el pasado, eh, la, la excusa era que los puertorriqueños no habíamos decidido. Desde el 2012 esa excusa ya no existe. Ya hay dos procesos electorales donde la voluntad democrática del pueblo de Puerto Rico ha sido clara y expresa y ha establecido que quiere rechazar el territorio colonial y que quiere transicionar hacia convertirse el Estado 51 de la nación americana. Por lo tanto, ante ese reclamo, ante la realidad de que los Estados Unidos es el puerto estandarte de la democracia, de la libertad a nivel global, hacemos este reclamo eh, para que esos llamados eh, que se hagan en Cuba, en Venezuela, en Siria, en Afganistán y en otras jurisdicciones tengan el peso que amerita eh, 
que solamente lo, ten, lo tendrían si se atiende el problema eh, colonial que existe en Puerto Rico y el problema eh, democrático si no se atiende este asunto. Así que eh, nuevamente reitero nuestras visitas aquí, eh, estaremos continuamente trabajando con este equipo de trabajo, con nuestra comisionada residente. Le agradecemos al, al congresista Don Young eh, por eh, su labor incansable por las últimas décadas eh, con el asunto de Puerto Rico. Él pasó eh, por algo similar cuando Alaska fue, eh, era, era un territorio y se convirtió en un estado. Y nuestro agradecimiento también al congresista de Florida, Darren Soto, por eh, hacer buena su palabra él reclama y sigue siendo su posición que Puerto Rico debe eh, tener la oportunidad y el espacio de autodeterminación. Él ha visto que ese proceso se ha llevado a cabo y por lo tanto eh, ha sido un puerto estandarte en la lucha por ello. A Jason Emmert por eh, su liderato, eh, su claridad en este asunto, por preparar un grupo de observadores eh, de calibre global eh, que todos concluyeron que el proceso fue tan o mejor que cualquier otro proceso que han visto eh, electoral. Eh, y, por supuesto, a nuestro secretario de Estado, a Luis Gerardo Rivera Marín, por eh, asegurarse que el, el proceso de los observadores y los otros eh, procesos se llevaran a cabo tanto eh, aquí en Washington como en Puerto Rico. Eh, nuevamente reitero, el pueblo de Puerto Rico ha hablado y nuestro reclamo es que el Congreso tiene que actuar ahora. Okay, vamos a tomar algunas preguntas. Saludos, gobernador. David Reyes, WIPR, Televisión, eh, Puerto Rico. Gobernador, eh, ¿cómo define, aunque sí lo ha parafraseado, este importante paso que hoy se da, un primer paso luego de tener eh, en sus manos un documento que evidencia el deseo del pueblo de Puerto Rico de apoyar la estadidad, primero y segundo, dentro de la misma pregunta, el hecho de que qué mejor es cabildero, ¿verdad?, que tener a dos congresistas. Pregunto si esto, la intención es que estos congresistas puedan eh, ser los que se acerquen a otros para que apoyen el esfuerzo que se pretende alcanzar. Sí, un día muy importante, ¿verdad?, esto porque eh, ya se está cristalizando lo que había sido una preocupación en el pasado, que era eh, cómo, eh, qué es lo que dice la expresión democrática del pueblo de Puerto Rico. Eh, ya no cabe duda eh, que este proceso se ha llevado a cabo, se ha llevado a cabo en dos ocasiones, y ya ha quedado meridianamente claro que eh, el pueblo de Puerto Rico rechaza la colonia y favorece la estadidad. En términos del proceso, ¿verdad? Eh, como saben, nuestra comisionada residente ha establecido un proyecto, un proyecto de admisión eh, para Puerto Rico que va a estar trabajando, entiendo por las expresiones del congresista eh, Darren Soto, que también va a colaborar eh, con ese esfuerzo y estoy seguro que eh, contaremos también con, con el congresista eh, Young eh, para que esto sea un esfuerzo bipartita eh, de derechos civiles, de derechos democráticos y nuevamente para que se encuentre una solución al problema. No es opción, no es opción que Estados Unidos ignore estos resultados, simplemente no lo es. Si hay ciudadanos americanos en un proceso democrático tomando una decisión, eh, se tiene que actuar. Nuestra posición era muy clara. Uh, nosotros queremos, uh, la gente de Puerto Rico necesita hacer la decisión por el estatus. Y después nosotros viajamos a la isla en este junio, 11 de junio, para observar uh, esta elección uh, en un grupo um, de ambos partidos, um, republicano, representante Dan Young y yo, un demócrata. Uh, nosotros observamos uh, que esta elección era en confianza con la ley y nosotros uh, escribimos una reporta uh, bipartisan quien va a describir uh, este al nuestro comité de Indian Insular y Alaskan Affairs y nosotros ahora vamos a llamar por una vista en este subcommittee y también para uh, en el futuro llamar por una voto de Congreso, uh, porque ahora la gente de Puerto Rico uh, dice su preferencia y ahora solamente nosotros tenemos un movimiento de derechos civiles por una comunidad de veteranos, de personas que pagan los impuestos uh, federales y también dicen uh, 
uh, un allegiance al, al nuestra bandera americana. Sí, hola, eh, Patricia Guadalupe de NBC Latino. Voy a hacer la pregunta en inglés porque sure, quiero course. que los co otros congresistas contesten. Uh, Governor, what do you say to people who are saying that maybe you should have waited, um, given what happened yesterday, um, that this is so far down on the congressional calendar that um, given what happened yesterday, that maybe you should have postponed it for another time. And I wanted to ask that of you to uh, Congressman Young and Soto. Thank do, you. Do you mean uh, regarding the, uh, the, the incident in, yes, the, in the baseball? Yes, that, that maybe you shouldn't have had it today. That, I mean, that's what some of the criticism that's been out there. Well, uh, listen, we, we are here to, uh, to support uh, Congressman uh, Solis. As a matter of fact, you know, one of the opportunities we were um, going to have uh, was to speak to the, to the congressman. Uh, our thoughts and prayers, uh, any support we, we can give in, in this, uh, uh, you know, w when we're here, uh, we, will, we will be giving it. And, and I uh, say that as, as the representative of, of the people of Puerto Rico. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are, are with him. Uh, we are, we are m uh, merely bringing uh, the attention of, of the results uh, to Puerto Rico. Uh, I think w we will carry on uh, with this issue. It doesn't mean that we're ignoring uh, what, what happened. As a matter of fact, my opening statements, I know you, you uh, came in a little bit later. My opening statements in, in this uh, press conference uh, were about you know, our, our thoughts and our prayers to, uh, to those that were affected by that tragedy. We have a job to do. And that's what we expect to do. We represent all the United States, and we're not going to stop. If we stop, the bad guys win. So I'm very pleased we're going forth. We have time to do this if we work, if we do our job, and that's what we expect to do. Gobernador, eh, yo quería preguntarle sobre si existe la posibilidad de solicitar de manera retroactiva eh, la asignación de fondos del Departamento de Justicia, eh, si ha considerado hacerlo eh, o solicitarlo dentro de este proceso. No, no es prioritario. Eh, nuestro, o sea, lo, lo importante aquí es que el pueblo de Puerto Rico eh, se expresó, se expresó en un proceso donde eh, nosotros habíamos establecido una ley originalmente, como bien sabe, para atender lo que eran... Eh, las soluciones al problema del estatus en Puerto Rico. No se incluyó inicialmente lo que era el territorio porque se entendía, se sobreentendía, que eso era parte del problema. No obstante, el Departamento de Justicia nos envía una carta con, unas, con unos cambios eh, que eh, piden que se hagan a la ley. Eh, nosotros lo hicimos palabra por palabra y por lo tanto la validación está, está ahí. Eh, el objetivo con todo esto, de nuevo, esto es un problema la magnitud de este problema, de ser una colonia, no se puede calcular meramente en dinero. Sí hay distintas eh, maneras de hacerlo. Por ejemplo, eh, al ser un territorio colonial y no ser eh, un Estado, eh, estamos en una situación donde recibimos, ¿verdad? el ciudadano común recibe una tercera parte eh, de lo que recibiría en términos de salud para, para el pueblo. Eh, eso nos afecta a nosotros, ¿verdad?, a los puertorriqueños, pero también afecta a los estados, porque cada ciudadano que se muda a uno de los estados, entonces aumenta el gasto en, en esos eh, estados y a nivel federal. De hecho, si la tendencia de éxodo continúa, eh, se proyecta que para los estados de la nación americana y el gobierno federal, en los próximos 15 años sería un gasto de eh, cerca de 20 billones de dólares adicionales por no atender el problema en Puerto Rico. O sea, que hay un efecto eh, económico, pero más allá de eso es un asunto de derechos civiles, es un asunto de derechos democráticos. Eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo podemos justificar que hay 3.5 millones de ciudadanos americanos que no tienen los mismos derechos que los ciudadanos americanos que viven eh, en cualquiera de los estados? ¿Cómo podemos justificarlo aún más? Después que hay una expresión clara del pueblo de Puerto Rico en dos ocasiones, rechazando la colonia y favoreciendo la estadidad. La contestación es que no hay manera de justificarlo y a la medida que nosotros podamos eh, seguir aumentando, amplificando eh, el eco de lo que ha ocurrido, vamos a seguir teniendo efectos positivos. Ya la Casa Blanca se ha expresado, escucharon que, dijo, eh, que, que dijeron que el pueblo de Puerto Rico ha, ha hablado 
y que ahora le compete, como constitucionalmente eh, se ha establecido, al Congreso a tomar acción. Ya hemos visto un sinnúmero de congresistas de ambos partidos, demócratas y republicanos, respondiendo al reclamo del pueblo de Puerto Rico y lo que estamos esperando es que ahora, con, con ese reclamo inequívoco, democrático, con ese resultado, eh, con, con la realidad de que esto es un problema de derechos civiles, de que se tome acción. El proceso uh, es muy claro. Uh, la decisión de estadidad es la decisión del Congreso. Uh, nosotros tenemos una opinión del Departamento de Justicia para cambiar uh, la balota, para incluir ambos, uh, uh, todas las tres opciones. Uh, la cosa increíble es cualquier la opinión del Departamento de Justicia o una vota, este todavía va a estar uh, una decisión del Congreso. Sin embargo, estos están hechos, el Congreso puede uh, considerar en esta decisión. Uh, mi opinión, uh, hay una posibilidad uh, si la isla va a recibir 2.5 mil dólares o no, pero yo no creo esta opinión de la just uh, Departamento de, de Justicia es una prohibición para la decisión del Congreso. Nuestra Constitución está muy clara, esta es la decisión del Congreso, y en nuestra historia nosotros usualmente tenemos una elección, pero este todavía no está necesario. En esta situación yo creo era muy importante. Sí, buenos días. José Delgado, del periódico El Nuevo Día. Gobernador, yo quisiera saber qué diferencia usted cree hubiera hecho esperar un par de meses por justicia federal, y si usted, usted está hablando de, de, de excusas, eh, si no le ha dado una nueva excusa al gobierno federal para no actuar, y si se va a necesitar, usted cree, un nuevo referéndum, quizás estadidad sí o no, después de esta consulta. And for Congressman Young, I, I, I would like you to, to comment regarding a few months ago in a hearing of the subcommittee, you mentioned that uh, probably was not the, the right time to go ahead with a, a statehood proposal because This of the was fiscal before the plebiscite. Yes, I know. The people have spoken. I know, I know. And that's why we're pushing for okay. it. And uh, be very frankly, I think we have a better chance now than we did six months ago. Okay. Because actually the uh, uh, image of Puerto Rico is uh, very frankly bankrupt. Uh, the plebiscite's been taken. They want to become a state. Uh, and that made me very happy. I'm very upfront with you. And, what and we're going to push it. What would happen with the PROMESA law and the territorial bankruptcy process? Well, I, that, uh, they're a state. They have the same rights as other states have had. They do not have it now. So, so that, 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 that's one you, thing. Do you, think that the, do you think the Congress can uh, uh, eliminate the, right, the law and they'll eliminate? They'll have all the rights of the states that uh, every other state has. Okay. And we have to accept that as a Congress. This is a, a territory which should not be, and we, we very frankly think these are 3,400,000 citizens that don't want to be in a colony anymore, and that's our job. And do you think that uh, the Congress can tell the governor, uh, last time we legislated, we offered you a referendum with the status alternatives validated by the attorney general? You didn't wait for that decision why you want us to legislate again. Very frankly, we're going to try everything again and get it done. We only have so much time. And I'm tired of sitting around. I did this in 1996. It's time we let the Puerto Ricans become Americans full scale. And I'm not really worried about anybody else. I, I second those, uh, those comments. And, and with your, your first question, you know, again, I think what, what the congressman Uh, stated validates why uh, we didn't need uh, to wait. There were the same alternatives that uh, were uh, expressed in 2012. Uh, there was a letter from uh, the Department of Justice stating what the, uh, you know, what the, uh, uh, the, the changes uh, that had to ensue. We provoked those changes. We let the people decide, and the uh, vote was, was uh, uh, clear. Uh, it was loud and clear. Uh, and lastly, You know, this, this component about waiting time, you know, when, when uh, Martin Luther King fought for civil rights, uh, when women fought for their right to suffrage, uh, they weren't waiting for the right time. Uh, they thought that the right time was right now. Uh, and we need to act in, this, in the same way and accordingly. We can't start thinking about who is 
uh, where uh, we need to take action because of the merits of what has occurred in Puerto Rico. It is a democratic process. It is the decision of the U.S. citizens of Puerto Rico, and the United States has to take action. The last question. I mean, yeah. Just to address the sovereign immunity issue. So PROMESA, by its terms, is not a bar or prohibition to an ultimate status determination. If Puerto Rico is admitted as a state, they will have sovereign immunity like any other state, which means they have every right to either accept all debts, deny all debts, or negotiate them. Now, keep in mind, to have a good credit rating, you're going to want to have some negotiation, which is why states usually pay their debts. Um, but at the end of the day, they would be a sovereign with uh, full right, uh, regardless of past laws like PROMESA, once a state to be in the driver's seat to negotiate these debts uh, from a state perspective, like any other state. So it would have a profound effect on the negotiation of the debt, ultimately. Sé que es la última oportunidad de preguntar, así que le voy a hacer algunas preguntas, eh, algunas Después. procesales que se contestan rápido. ¿Qué, ¿Cuál fue la petición que se le hizo al secretario general de la OEA sí. esta mañana eh, sobre el proyecto de, de Jennifer González? ¿Cuándo se va a presentar uno nuevo o si van a acoger como suyo el proyecto de los congresistas aquí presentes? ¿Y para cuándo ustedes esperan una, un, unas vistas públicas? Sí. Eh, El, el proyecto, eh, verdad, no es un proyecto de los congresistas aquí presentes, es que hubo una, una confusión, era que iban a apoyar eh, lo que lo que estaba estableciendo la, la congresista. Obviamente se discutirán cuál sería el mejor proyecto posible para poder tener eh, el apoyo congresional. Sobre la OEA, eh, pues tuvimos una discusión eh, sobre eh, presentar lo que eran los, los resultados del plebiscito ante el secretario eh, ¿verdad? de la OEA y y sus expresiones, y nos autorizó a, a, a decirlas, es que eh, ellos validan eh, ¿verdad? lo que es eh, los derechos civiles, los derechos eh, humanos y derechos democráticos del pueblo de Puerto Rico eh, que se ha expresado y que hacen un llamado a que se concluya con el eh, sistema colonial esto máxime después de que el pueblo se haya expresado ulterior ante la OEA? Bueno, sab saben que hay un, ya una querella eh, que lleva eh, casi una década. Eh, le hemos solicitado que se puedan hacer algunas de esas vistas y particularmente se puedan hacer eh, en Puerto Rico y, y le hemos establecido eso como una petición. Thank you. Have a, have a nice day. Vamos a tener una, una serie de reuniones, ciertamente respetando eh, lo que ha ocurrido, lo que ocurrió ayer, pero a la misma vez Eh, hablar y discutir con, con congresistas y distintas personas que son instrumentales en el proceso.